In a previous video, I showed you how to create multiple dependent dropdown lists based on an initial dropdown. And this is where we could make a choice from an initial dropdown like international. But then that choice changed the options listed in three dependent dropdowns like product, warehouse, and carrier. And if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you check it out. The link is in the video description or you can just click the card in the upper right. But what this video is going to focus on is the issue for when you've made these secondary choices, what happens if you go back and change the initial choice? You see, now when I've changed the location to domestic, these are not domestic products, warehouses, or carriers. So let's use a little conditional formatting to flag the products, warehouses, or carriers that no longer match the selection made in the location dropdown. I like to do these conditional format tests directly on the spreadsheet first, just to make sure my logic is working, and then I could just copy paste it into the conditional formatting tool. So I'm just gonna pick a random cell here, and we'll start by discovering the list selected by the user in the first dropdown. So we're going to use that same indirect function and point to cell A3. Now, if I just hit enter, this is going to return back the list of domestic products. Now, not to get too far ahead, but if I were to take that A3 entry and concatenate to that what we did earlier, like a double quote, underscore one, double quote, this would give me the list of domestic cities. And if I change this to underscore two, then I get a list of domestic carriers. So that indirect function is just going out and getting one of those three lists. What I actually want to do is see if the item selected by the user in the products dropdown is in the selected list. So let's go ahead and change this back to just returning the list of domestic products. So if we take this indirect function and we wrap it inside of a count if function, so we'll scan the range returned by the indirect function and then check and see if that range contains the item selected by the user in cell A6. Close parentheses, hit enter, and it comes back with zero. Now the reason it's showing zero is because that's the equivalent of a false. It did not find the entry in the domestic list. But if I change this from domestic to international, now it returns a one because that says I found it because it's just counting the number of times that it found it. It found it one time. So I could change this to bikes. It found it one time. I could change it to hammocks. It found it one time. But if I change this to domestic, it found hammocks zero times. Now, if you think about it, I really need the exact opposite of that. So if I were to choose international and it says, hey, I found hammocks, conditional formatting works on a true. So if the question is true, it's going to invoke the conditional formatting. I want the conditional formatting to be invoked if it is false. So we'll go back to this function and we'll take the count if and we'll wrap it in a not function. Go to the end, close parentheses, enter, and now it says false. Because hammocks is in the international list, I don't want conditional formatting to be triggered. But if I were to change it from international to domestic, it's now triggering a true. Because if we look back at the formula, just looking at the pieces, if we look through the list of go-kart skateboards and slides and count the number of times we see hammocks, the count if function is going to come back and say, I found it zero times. So hammocks is not in the domestic list. It needs to be flagged as such. So the not operator is going to take that and flip it into a true. So whenever you run a number through a not operator, zeros are false and every other number is true. That is our formula we need to put into conditional formatting. So I'm going to take this entire formula and copy it, control C, hit escape, and then we'll go to the products dropdown, go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and I'll just paste that formula into the new rule dialog box. Now it's just a matter of formatting. So for this one, I'm going to give it a white font, bold italic with a deep red fill. Hit OK. And now hammocks is being flagged as not being in the domestic list. If we change this to international, hammocks is in the list. So the conditional formatting is false, which means it's removed. So currently I'm looking at all international products. But if I change it to domestic, darts is not in the domestic list. Now, of course, I could change this to an item that is in the domestic list and the conditional formatting goes away. But if I change it to international, skateboards is not in the international products list. The only thing left to do is to take this formula and copy paste it to the warehouse and carrier dropdowns, but including those concatenated underscore one underscore twos for the indirect. So we'll go to warehouse, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, paste that formula in, but then we'll modify this to say, we want to concatenate an underscore one to this. Now we also need to change where the count if is looking for the item to search for. Instead of cell A6, it's going to be A9. We'll go to format, do the same formatting, deep red fill, bold italic, white font. 
hit OK a couple times. Sydney is international, but if I change it to domestic, Sydney is not a domestic entry. Skateboards is, though, and I can change this to something like Dallas. Finally, for carrier, we'll go to conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, paste the formula, and as before, we'll add the concatenated underscore 2, and then we'll also change this from A6 to A12, because that's the cell for the third dropdown. We'll do our formatting. FedEx is not a domestic carrier, but if we change this to international, FedEx is. But Dallas and skateboards are not. So let's get everybody synchronized here. We'll choose an international warehouse and an international product. So now that everybody's happy, if we go back to location and change this to domestic, now everybody's angry. But at least now you know that you have a product warehouse or carrier that no longer matches the location choice. Be sure to download this sample file from a link in the video description because it's got all the documentation for what we created in the prior video where we used indirect for the data validation dropdown lists. But it also contains the formulas I created here in conditional formatting to do that red flagging when an item is not in the matching list. We got a lot of great feedback from the prior video where I showed you how to create the one-to-many dependent dropdown lists. But I'd also like to know from you if you plan on implementing the error checking to sort of sweeten it up. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.